Welcome back to part three of this series, The Roller Organ. It's been a few months since I've touched this. I've put a lot of deep thought into it and I've acquired some supplies. We'd prototyped a few parts in the past and today we're going to make them. Now we're not going to work on the door, although the door is its own little project. A lot to do there and a couple more parts to hunt down to do it right. You know, I wasn't going to work on the top end, but I forgot we actually do have something to work on on the top end. But first, let's lay down this pad, and we'll get to work. You know, what I really want to get done today is I want to work on two parts of this. Of course, the eight hole patterns are the roller organs flat valves. This lets air escape as the bellows close and closes to lock it up when it's drawing air in through the reeds. Also these down here are referred to as the dump valves or the relief valves. They're just in terrible condition although this original one's okay. That little spring is still there but I think I'm going to reconstruct these now first, you'll remember in the past, we had this broken part in the back. This is known as the rear crankshaft bearing, and it's all made of wood. Well, we'd put it together and it's been sitting here glued up for months, and it's ready to go in today. You can see that front crankshaft bearing, and this is basically its brother, or sister, or whatever. Luckily enough, I uh, have all the original screws. That's very cool. And that's what we're going to put these back in with. Not trying to over tighten anything, just trying to cinch it down so that it doesn't walk and take on any damage like it did in the past. Of course, there's this top little part to hold things down. I love these tiny little screws. I just love this little piece. Every little piece in here is a fantastic little thing that was created by human hands at one point. Not uh, necessarily out of the best building materials, but of course, these crankshaft bearings are made out of a harder wood than the rest of the organ. There it is, nice and smooth. You see the damage on that back wall from it wobbling for years in its past at some time and I'm glad to be ending that damage. Now I'm going to put these screws back in and mount the organ down to the box just so I have a stable place for it to sit and be held while we're working on the bottom of it. Oof, those felt pads on the reed uh, intake holes are looking pretty rough. And of course there's going to need to be some arm adjustments, but we're not going to mess with the felt today. We want it to actually run and make music before we're too worried about fixing the felts on the top end. So with that, I'm going to unscrew these flap valves, or relief valves, or dump valves, or whatever you want to call them. Looks like some duct tape was put on there at some point to help seal the holes a little better. Not the worst idea, actually. I'm going to be replacing these parts and covering the bottoms in kind of a synthetic leather. I don't know that it's totally necessary, but I do know that it'll just allow a better seal on those holes when it's intended to be sealed. As you can see how this is constructed, kind of a cloth hinge and a little wire hinge. Well, a wire spring actually to hold the hinge where it needs to be. Now looking down in those holes, there was kind of a soft leather with a cloth backing on it, and this was the closest thing I could find. I looked at a lot of different fabric, and I even purchased some at one point, but finally I went back to this. Kind of a fake leather on one side that has high durability and a cloth on the back. I'll use it to cover the bottom of the dump valves or the relief valves like that.
Now, if you remember, I don't have any power down at the shop. So I have a very small solar kit running the lights that's all hodgepodge together. And it even runs a box fan sometimes. But today I need the generator to run this table saw. I'm going to mark out the dimensions here, and I'm actually going to change the dimensions slightly just because I want good hold down power on part of that where it screws into the bottom. But now it's time to translate that to wood and put it on the table saw. Now I do not have any lumber thin enough for this, nor can I physically drive a vehicle right now, so I can't go buy it. But what I can do is make it. What I need is something thin, about Boy, it's got to be three-eighths to half of an inch thin. Can't quite remember the exact number. But we're going to thin it out, and we're going to make it right here on the table saw. Of course, I'm going to square up the blade here, and we're going to bring it in real narrow. I'm going to run this piece through the saw upright and basically thin that stock down from three-quarter of an inch to whatever the thickness was that it needed to be. Now, of course, don't take anything I do with this saw as the way to do it. Always read your safety manual and consult other people that know what they're doing. Sure, I was a carpenter. Sure, I've used a ton of saws for a ton of years. But I'm sure somebody's going to tell you that I'm missing some sort of safety thing here. And um, I'm not exactly sure how you would put the blade guard on when running a piece through like this. But if you do, more power to you. I don't. But watch your hands. So as you can see, I milled that out nice and thin. And it's exactly how I have to have it for this. Of course, it's a little rough when it leads into the blade, like you can see there. Kind of uneven. And it's not much different at the other end pulling out of the blade. At the very ends of these boards, there was a slight twist anyway. And of course, just a little leading in rough. But the middle section of that board is absolutely perfect. And in fact, I'm going to have enough lumber there to make three of these valves, just in case one of them breaks while I'm putting it together. I really do love using the table saw. It is one of my favorite tools. It always has been. I used to have a very nice Bosch table saw with the hydraulic table that would lift and lower the saw. It was pretty awesome. I sold it because I was in a tight place for money many years ago and I have always regretted it. I didn't get enough money out of it to justify selling it. And uh, recently I bought this DeWalt saw and I'm pretty happy with it. I had a DeWalt saw probably 20 years ago, and the rack and pinion adjustment for the fence was terrible and inaccurate. And they have definitely upgraded that part, and it is remarkably accurate. I always double check my measurements and measure from the tip of the carbide on the blade to the side of my fence to make sure that the cut dimension is going to be accurate. And I have been shocked that the guide on the saw is absolutely accurate, so I look forward to maybe using it a little. Anyway, there it is, three sets of parts. Brand new, nice and clean, not like our hand cut prototype that was all crooked and out of square. This is going to be beautiful, and it's going to be perfect, and we're going to start working towards assembling these like the old one. Like I had said before, I made this piece a little bigger because I wanted a nice, firm, flat plant on the bottom of that piece of wood when I screw it in. So, for you purists out there, sorry. There's enough about this organ that I simply won't be able to restore to perfection that I am truly not worried about this dimension being off. This organ's not going to get sold. It's going to get passed down through the family, hopefully for a few more generations. So... Of course, it'll be nice to indicate which repairs were done by me 
and to put a new date for the restoration on the bottom of it next to the date that it was originally manufactured. As you can see, I'm laying out these pieces of leather that I've just cut out, and I found this E6000 or E600 glue. I really did look at tons and tons and tons of glue, and I wanted something that didn't swell. I wanted something that had grabbed to the fabric, but also grabbed to the wood properly. And I ended up with this. I've never used this, and uh, it ended up working great. I really did uh, think this glue was great, although it sets up fast. It gets a gummy, tacky kind of like jello skin on it fast, so you got to be careful. Um, anyway, that leather is on there, and I want to clamp it down flat for a couple of hours and just let it bond to that wood with full, even pressure. Now on to these guys, the old flat valves. I'm basically going to mark out these dimensions and figure out where I want them. I'm going to make them a little oversized from the old ones because I'm not going to try to remove these old nails or deal with these holes because I think I'd just do more damage and I can't bang them around because the wood is so old at this point plus other fasteners connected to these parts might take on damage or become loose. So I don't want to do more damage than is necessary. So we're going to make these flaps slightly larger and move the screw holes back a little bit. Now this wood is so soft and old that I ran the drill bit in reverse and uh, it went through pretty easily. Found some good old brass screws and that's how we're going to be fastening these in. Now if I crank the handle you'll be able to see first of all there's enough slack there that it can push the air out but if you look it pushes air out and it sucks back and closes the holes that's how it's supposed to function, and that's super awesome. I wonder how long it's truly been since it's had something functional like that on it. I don't think I've ever truly seen it in my lifetime. Although not functioning as strongly as I would hope for, they are moving quite a bit of air, and that proves that they're working correctly. I just feel like these things are a little weak still, and I'm wondering if I missed something when I was inspecting the bellows when I had this out in the past. But I guess we'll find out at the end when we try to play some music on this thing. Well, I've had these glued up for a while, and it's time to put on the hinge. So I've cut these two small strips, and we're going to adhere these and, of course, clamp them down again. I'm going to put those folded up pieces of shop towel in there just to make sure I get even pressure on the hinge as well. So as you can see, the hinge is glued and that bottom mat's under there still gluing away. Well, I guess we got to move on to something new here, and that is taking a break. I needed a nice long break. Still kind of recovering and uh, took a rest. But the sun was almost down, although this camera makes it look like it's pretty bright out. But I'm down to the point where I got to rely on my little tiny solar kit here that I've hodgepodge together just to run some shop lights and come down and unglue this little guy. So. I'm excited to see it. And yep, everything's setting up pretty good. Looks nice. I think I'll trim the extra off the end of those hinges. And here's what we're working with now. The hinges on top, the leather pads on the bottom, and we need to cut a relief line in that leather pad on the bottom so the flap can actually function.
and there it is. Now that leather pad can get fastened down to the bottom of the organ, and it can hinge on that little leather hinge. The only thing we're actually missing at this point is going to be the relief valve springs or the dump valve springs. So I'm going to have to fabricate those, and I found some metal wire that ought to do the trick. Mark the holes and the positions I want them. Now I'm kind of trying to match the angle that was done on the original spring, although I did have concerns that the angle is so sharp that when the valve starts opening, it might really just put stress on the seam and pull those parts side to side, as opposed to flapping the valve. I've installed this first one here and what I find is that it works absolutely wonderfully. Tap those into those holes and it just worked great. Look at how good that works. That is an awesome part. I'm so happy with that. So now we're going to do the same thing over here. But of course my concerns are realized it seems that this spring doesn't necessarily want to do what I want it to do. It actually wants to pull the pieces of wood side to side from each other. As you can see here, I cut and remade this spring three different times at different tensions, trying to get this to spring properly. And all it seemed to do was push the pieces of wood further and further away from each other side to side. And ultimately, I had to redrill the hole and push it out further, as you can see here. It just wasn't pushing out the tension on the board to make it spring properly, like the first one. And I may even change the first one, because I like the way the second one works so well now. I truly believe it's a better spring position, and I'm very happy with it. I think that's probably the way I would like it done on the other one, and I will go ahead and adjust that at some point here. But for now, they both work fantastically, and I'd like to get them installed. And so we're going to install them. The other benefit of making this piece, uh, the hinge mounts to a little bigger was that I can move back the screw holes from where the original screw holes were. Um, I just don't want to deal with the damaged wood. I need new holes where I can get solid fastening uh, so that this will last. Check that out. Let's get that second one on there. I'm so excited at this point because this is theoretically everything I have to do as long as those bellows are right and they looked right. Now you're not going to see a lot out of those dump valve. I know you'd like to see them flipping and flapping, but if they did, they'd hit the table this thing was standing on. They're simply there to actively dump extra pressure so you don't damage the bellows. You know... One of these was taped completely shut, which worries me that it wasn't able to dump hard enough in the past. But let's see. Theoretically, this thing should play music if that's all that was wrong with it. Now I'm going to adjust these little keys here. I want them to close because otherwise it just kind of honks and groans the notes that are held open. Well, it can function one note at a time, and that is good news. It's quiet, which means it's just drawing deadly. Uh, so now I'm going to put in a roll and see if it can actually handle drawing air across multiple notes when it's playing a full song, which is quite a bit of air. I'll be excited to see what it can do. Almost forgot. Better put those little screws back in on the crank just so it's not flopping around. Well, that's a pretty clicky noise and pretty disappointing. Everything down here is functioning properly. But like I said, those dump valves should be opening a little more than that. It should have more air to dump, especially when a cob is on it, which makes me worry that the bellows up in there are damaged because really, sadly, that's all it could be at this point. 
Just to be sure, I'll try another cob here and make sure it's not that I have an incompatible cob from some other machine. You know, now I realize that I know this song. This is the song I remember hearing when I was a kid on this. And sadly, I don't think it ever sounded any better than this. And that means maybe the bellows have been rotted since before I was born. Maybe this thing never worked quite right. Because I remember us having to crank on this thing for our dear lives just to get it to play a song. I don't ever remember it being the way it's supposed to be where you can crank it pretty slowly and there's good, steady, even air. And it plays a nice, clean song. I just remember this loud clicking and faint noise. So I'm going to have to call it a day and turn out the lights down here on the shop. And I think we're going to end up having to work on the bellows in the next episode. Guys, thanks for watching. If you would, like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the next video. God bless. Have a great day.